Namaste and good morning. Let's start our class with the prayers. Om Guru Brahma Guru Vishnu Guru Devo Maheshwaraha Guru Sakshat Parabrahma Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Om Sahana Vavatu Sahana Bhunaktu Sahaviryam Karvavahai Tejasvinavadhi Tamastu Ma Vidvishavahai Om Shanti 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 now we will chant Mahamrityunja Mantra three times to pray for those who are in suffering. Om Trayamba Kanyajamahe Sugandhim Pushti Vardhanam Uruvarukam Ivabandhana Mutyur Mukshi Mamrutat Om Trayambakam Yajamahe Sugandhim Pushti Vardhanam Uruvarukam Eva Bandhana Mutyur Mukshi Amrutat Om Trayambakam Yajamahe Sugandhim Pushti Vardhanam Uruvarukam Eva Bandhana Mutyur Mukshi Amrutat Om Shanti 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 Welcome everyone. Will our today start the class number 15? In last class, class number 14, we studied the Krut Pratyaya or the present participle. We studied the present participle for Parasmai Padi roots. And as you know that we studied the active participle, the word active here indicates that it is for Kartari, Kartari Prayoga. You remember we had active and passive voice. So this is the active voice, which is called Kartari Prayoga in Sanskrit. Today we will study present participle for Atmane Padi roots and we will see both active and passive voice. So Kartari and Karmani Prayoga. In Parasmai Padi roots, there is no Karmani Prayoga, there is no passive voice. So, here you don't have a choice. It will be only active participle for Parasmai Padi roots. But Atmane Padi, because Atmane Padi suffixes are taken, used both in the Kartari sense, in the active sense, as well as the Karmani Prayoga sense. So, both options are possible. And again, we'll see both present and future participle. So if you remember the last time when we had the suffix, its name was Shatru or At was the name of the suffix here, Shatru, At, that is for the Parasmaipadi root. This is for the Atmanipadi root, it's called Shanaj or Ana, the ones remaining is Ana, out of Shanaj only Ana remains, so actual suffix is Ana only but Panini defines it the way 
by putting some other letters and make it shanaj there is a use of those extra letters uh, which is studied when you study pani grammar in origin so one characteristic of this suffix is that it's only from atmanipadi roots so there is a very clear distinction last time what we study at shatru pratyaya that was from parasmaipadi roots this is from atmanipadi roots the meaning is exactly the same so the same pratyaya at the meaning which it conveys in for parasmaipadi root the same meaning is conveyed by ana for atmanipadi roots <coughs> and this thing that this pratyaya even though it has ana but when the verbal base is ending in akara then you add mana so all the roots we have studied so far they have the verbal base ending in ana all the atmanipadi roots that's what we have studied so those are all in the ana and akaranta so if you look at here we had this uh, this class where we said that these are the various classes of the roots in class number 5 we studied this and this in the four classes first four sixth and tenth the verbal base ends in akara so like choraya or bhu, for bhu it is bhuva bhava dev deva so like that so verbal base ends in akara so we have only studied so far the roots for these four classes which are end in r so for our purpose you will find that we are ending mana but the actual suffix is ana and there were there are other roots where the verbal base does not end in akara therefore you add ana not mana and example is like lavha mana labhate so labhate becomes labhamana that's how you make the participle so it's very simple here because if you go to verb conjugation table and if you remember labhadhatu it is like you just take this labhate and remove te remaining is the base and you add mana to the base so labha mana so you can take third person singular and just remove the ending te and add the mana so becomes labha mana the resulting word as it was in the previous case it's a pratipadika it's a nominal base and being a nominal base it will have declensions you see the how the base is ending in akara the unlike unlike in here the end with the base is ending in takara in parasmaipadi roots here the base is end, ending in akara because of the declensions become extremely simple so here you all you have to do is just like rama so ending in akara exactly like the same the declensions will go so that makes it very very easy for you to decline these participle because the base is in the base is akaranta ending in akara the feminine base would be akaranta all you have to do is instead of akara you add akara so it becomes labha mana 
what does lavamana or lavamana mean one who so it becomes an adjective and lava means as you know the base lava means to attain to gain so one who is gaining so it becomes the base for one who is gaining that just like the gachan when we studied gachan for the parasmaipadi for the parasmaipadi roots gachat was the base and it means he who is going similarly lavamana when you decline it means he who is gaining or obtaining something similarly lavamana would be she who is gaining something who is gaining so because this suffix is used for atmanipadi roots and as i told you that atmanipadi suffixes are used both for in the sense of active voice and passive voice kartari and karmani prayoga i hope you remember we discussed the passive voice in class number 11 the suffix is also used for the passive voice karmani prayoga like gamya mana so if i recall your memory that we had this passive voice so ramaha vidyalayam gachyati that is an active voice sentence and in passive voice it becomes ramena vidyalaya gamyate so the it becomes gamyate the, it takes the atmanipadi suffix and gamya becomes the base because again it's an akara akaranta base it becomes gamya mana gamya now unlike active sense where lava mana would mean that he who is gaining something he who is who is getting something gamya mana means what so if you go again back to the passive voice you see gamya te here it is related to vidyalaya not to rama because karmani prayoga the object or the karma becomes the direct connection to the verb so when you say gamya mana it, it will refer to vidyalaya so the one which is being gone to that is the difference between the active and passive voice and it will become clear as we see the examples it is generally used as an adjective just like the participle for the parasmaipadi roots and we will also see the future participle how how does it, that work so one good thing about in this pratyaya this suffix is that the declensions are extremely easy you see lavamana lavamana both her declensions are very very familiar there are no exceptions no like two stem three stem kind of thing it is something we have used many many times so that is the good thing here and second the meaning is exactly the same as far as karmani prayoga is concerned as it was for the at pratyaya so to understand shanach pratyaya after the shatru pratyaya it's extremely easy we'll see the examples so just read these sentences and then we'll see those sentences so just just take a look at these sentences let i'll just open a file one second so just just take a, just take couple of minutes to read these sentences
so now we'll see how to these sentences are used in sanskrit that will give you a clear understanding how do we use the participle so just to let you know you probably know already diving is a verb and in sanskrit it is gaha gaha is the root gaha means to dive to plunge so this is the root we'll use for today's class a lot to understand and it is the atmanepadi root and that's how the declensions uh, the conjugations are in the present tense it's gahate gahete gahante very simple just like any other simple atmanepadi root and lutlakara the future tense is this so we'll see that and uh, i have also put the declensions of gahamana again it is exactly the same as like rama no difference and we'll we'll look at that so gaha is our root so shyama dives into the river river you know nadi nadi it's an ekaranta word and na uh, like nari nadi so it's an ekaranta word the first singular is nari nari like this and naryam is the seventh case singular so ram shyama dives into the river how do we make it shyama so it will be the seventh case singular so nadyam dahate so simple sentence no complications shyama dives into the river shyama nadyam gahate it's a present tense sentence for an atmanepadi root rama sees shyama diving into the river so now you see this sentence shyama is diving into the river and rama sees him it's not a question mark it's a actual full stop so rama she is shyama diving into the river here you can see because diving is happening at the time when rama is seeing it becomes a present participle so we'll have rama pashyati so rama sees how does he see? he see shyamam so he will see shyamam first he will see shyama so shyamam and diving into the river so gahate will become gaha mana and because shyamam is sec accusative singular gaha mana also will be accusative singular so it becomes gaha manam and nadyam so generally the way you will make this sentence you will put the order would be like this generally rama gahamanam shyamam rama rama nadyam gahamanam shyamam pashyati that's how you will make the sentence so this is pretty simple if you look at here nominal so here gahamanam the accusative singular so shyamam gahamanam it's exactly the same declensions like akaranta like ram so rama nadyam gahamanam shyamam pashyati rama si shyama diving into the river now look at this one rama gives a fruit to shyama diving into the river 
So again, Shama is in the middle of this action, diving into the river, and Rama gives a fruit to Shama. Shama comes in the fourth case. Remember, for giving, fruit will come the second case, and Shama will come in the fourth case. And because he is diving, you can write it exactly the same manner Ramaha Nadyam. Now, Nadyam is okay in the river. Shyamam, Shyama, it will be in the fourth case because fruit is being given. So, Shyamaya. And because he is diving, it's also Gaha Manaya. So, Gaha Manaya Shamaya Falam Yachati Rama Nadyam Gaha Manaya Shamaya Falam Yachati. So it looks like a long sentence, but if you can break it into the components, it becomes very easy. So Gahamanaya Shamaya refers to the because Shama is in the fourth case, the the participle or the Shanach Pratyaya, this word also will be in the fourth case because it's an adjective to Shama. And give the fruit. He is giving the fruit. Now we have put another thing. Rama gives a fruit to the brother of Shama who is diving into the river. So think of it, how will you make this sentence? Now the Shama, the brother of Shama. So Shama is diving into the river and his brother. So Shama is in the sixth case. So that's why Gaha Mana also would be the sixth case because of Shama. So Shama se Bhata. So the way you will put it is Ramaha Gaha Manasya Shamasya to the brother of. So brother will come in the fourth case. Now, I hope you remember, but we had this nominal declensions for brother. Like Pitru, there is a word called Bhatru. Bhatru for brother. It's a Rukaranta relationship now. So the fourth case singular way is a Pitre. So Bhatre. It will become Bhatre. So Shyamasya Bhatre. Falam Yachati. You see, it looked like a very big sentence, but when you start making, it's pretty simple and straightforward. Ramaha Gaha Manasya Shyamasya Bhatre Falam Yachati. Rama gives a fruit to the brother of Shyama diving into the river. So this is the present participles for present kartari in an active sense. So we are using so far in the active sense present participle. And I will take any questions if you have. So that before we move forward, let me see if you have any questions. Okay, Nadyam is missing. So I'll put Nadyam here. Good point. Nadyam Gahamanasya and here also Nadyam. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Anything, uh, 
Any anybody else any question so far? The question is masculine and feminine. We discussed neuter also is the same way. So gahamana because neuter the base remains the same as masculine, and you will do the akaranta noun just like vanam. So like rama is the masculine noun and vana is the neuter noun. So you will like decline like this gahamanam gahamane like that. So no difference between except that the gender would be neuter and then you will have use the neuter declinations. So, so far good. So far, I, I, I think based upon your questions, it seems like you, you are understanding fine. So, sentence for the question is, is Gaiyamana. It's not Gaiyamana. Gaiyamana is brother's adjective. So, would it not be Gaiyamana? No. Here, the Gaiyamana is Gahamana is not brother's adjective. It's a Shyama who is diving into the river, his brother. So, it is, it is Shyama's brother. And Shyama is the one who is diving into the river. So, Gahamana is the adjective of Shyama. That's why it's Shyamasya. Gahamanasya. Okay, now we will see the future participle. Alright, so Rama sees Shyama who would be diving into the river. Or you can say who is going to dive into the river. In English we can say like that also. Who is going to dive into the river or who would be dying, diving into the river. So now it's a future tense. Gahamana, we have to see what are the future declensions. So we saw the present tense, gahate, gahat, gahete, gahante, and future tense is gaheshyate, gaheshyate, gaheshyante. So the uh, the Formation of participle will still be the exactly the same. So gahishyate you will take and instead of te you will add mana gahishya mana. So that's how the word will become gahishya mana. So we'll use this word gahishya mana. Gahishya mana means one who would be diving. So here the uh, the translation would be Ramaha Gahishya Manam. So remember this sentence and this the second sentence the second sentence. They are very similar except here it is the I can actually take the same sentence here. So Rama sees Shama diving into the river. I can take exactly the same sentence. Here it's diving into the river. So instead of gahamanam, it becomes gahishyamanam. That's the only difference. Otherwise, it will be the same. So gahishmanam. So Gahishyamanam. Ramaha Nadyam Gahishyamanam Shyamam Pashyati. So in the present, when you use present participle, the sense is that he is actually diving into the river at that point of time when Rama sees Shyama. Here Rama is seeing Shyama who is just getting ready, like he is not diving, he will be diving into the river sometime in the future, who is going to dive in the river. So that, that's the kind of sense. Now, exactly the same way I have modified this sentence. Rama gives a fruit to Shama diving into the river. Rama gives a fruit to Shama going to dive into the river. So, we'll take this sentence. Uh, 
राम नद्या गाहमानाय श्यामाय फलम यछति सो एवरीथिंग विल रिमेन द सेम एक्सेप्ट इट बिकम्स गाहिष्यमानाय 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 श्यामाय फलम यछति रामा gives a fruit to shyama going to dive into the river remember if it were the case that rama will rama will give a fruit to shyama going to dive into the river then this verb form which is linked to rama that would change to future tense form if it were a sentence rama or rama gave a fruit to shyama suppose the sentence were rama gave a fruit to shyama going to dive into the river then this verb form which is yachati which shows you the present tense it would become in the past tense that is the only difference so this is the future participle as you can see future participle and present participle very similarly used now the next sentences are passive voice so now here we see river is dived into by sham so remember what was our first sentence shyama dives into the river this was our first sentence now we are saying river is dived into by shyama that means it should be the passive voice how do we make passive voice i hope you remember so we change the karta shyama is the karta into the third case so shyamena then nadyam becomes the nadyam would remain the nadyam actually so this is not the Uh, best example here because it's not an object so if we have to choose an example which is uh, let me use the our example rama goes to school maybe or shyama goes to school that might be a better one so i can take the example from here here it is somebody said it is <coughs> so let me take this example so we will just say shyama here instead of rama so that our श्याम विद्यालय गच्छति देन द दिस इज द एक्टिव वॉइस सेंटेंस एंड पैसिव वॉइस सेंटेंस वुड बिकम श्यामेन विद्यालय गम्यते सो दिस इज आवर एक्टिव वॉइस सेंटेंस दिस इज एक्टिव वॉइस दिस इज पैसिव वॉइस श्यामेन विद्यालय गम्यते सो विल जस्ट से हेयर इंस्टेड ऑफ रिवर विल से रामा सीज द स्कूल gone to by shyama we'll change our example so that you i hope you understand why i change the example because i want to have the karma or the object in the first case in, in that case the nadi was in the sec, seventh case so that's why i change the example to vidyalaya so rama sees the school gone to by shyama 
So here Rama is not seeing Shyama going to the school. That would be the active voice. Rama is seeing the school which is gone to by Shyama. So Vidyalaya is the first case. And that would be qualified by gone to. So Gamyate, that's a passive voice. How will you make the participle out of that? Gamyamana. Just remember, instead of te, I'll use mana, gamya mana. So, how will I do that here? Ramaha, Shamena, gamya mana, vidyalaya. Pashyati. Ramaha Shamena. So remember this thing Shamena Vidyalaya Gamyati. Here it is the Gamyati which is being changed to Gamyamana. So Shamena Vidyalaya Gamyamana. So exactly the same Shamena Gamyamana Vidyalaya Rama Pashyati. So once you understand the basic sentence, you understand that what the participle is changing. Participle is just changing this verb form. Instead of gamyate, it is making gamya mana and creating the so, uh, subclause that the school which is being gone to by Shama, that's the school which Rama sees. So we can also change this here. School would be gone to school would be gone to by Shama. So this is the future passive. So this is the present passive participle. Now if I say future passive, you will say school would be gone to by Shama. So, how will you do that? First of all, you make the active sentence. Shama will go to the school. How will you make active sentence? Let's first try active sentence. So, Shamaha Vidyalayam Gamishyati. For passive, it's always the Atmanipadi suffix which are used, irrespective of whether the root is Parasmipadi or Atmanipadi. Here the root is Parasmipadi, gum, but we still use the Atmanipadi suffixes while making the passive voice or Karmani Prayoga. So this is our active, active voice, Kartari Prayoga. Shyama Vidyalayam Gamishyati. So first you will make the Passive voice. So, so it will become gamishyate in the passive in the passive voice. So shyamena vidyalayam gamishyate. So exactly the same sentence as it is here. So shyamena vidyalaya gamishyate. A school would be gone to by Shama. That's the simple sentence. Now we see how do we use the participle. Rama see, Ra, so here I see Rama sees the school. That would be gone to by Shama. So here it becomes so the participle. So just like in the present case, we made this participle Ramaha Shamena Vid Gamya Mana Vidyalaya Pashyati. Sorry, here I made a mistake actually. So because the school is in the second case, it will be Gamya Manam. The second case would be used. So Gamya Manam Vidyalayam. Pashyati. 
Ramaha Shyam, because Rama is seeing the school. So first of all, you just see Ramaha Vidyalayam Pashyati. Rama is seeing the school. What kind of a school? That which we, which is gone to by Shyam. So Shyamena Gamya Mahanam Vidyalayam Pashyati. Now here, if I take the same sentence. So if, if I want to make a future, then I will make it Gamishyamanam. So Gamishyate Gamishyamanam. Gamishyamanam. Gamishyamanam Vidyalayam Pashyati. So that becomes a future passive. This is very unusual. You will normally don't find future passive participle being used. Uh, but I just wanted to, for the sake of completeness, I wanted to show you how to use the future passive also. So any questions so far? OK. So if there are no more question, no questions, I hope you understood because it, it was not difficult actually if you attended the last class and understood the exercise part, that's not difficult. So, so far we covered present participle and future participle, both in active and passive sense and for both Parasmai Padi and Atmani Padi roots. So last class and this class, we covered all the present and future participles for both types of roots. Now we will be in the next class, we will be covering the past participle. And past participles are quite important and they are much more frequently used in Sanskrit literature than present and future participle. So past participle is most used then present participle and then future participle. So we will see past participle in the our next class. But so far if there are no more questions I just want to also tell you one thing here mana will become mana so actually gamishya ma it will become gamishya manam so because if it is refa or shakara here we have shakara So it becomes Gamishya Manam Vidyalayam Pashyati. So many times you will see instead of Mana, it is Mana. So remember our Nattam rule based upon that, it will become either Mana or Mana. So accordingly you will change. So in the future participles, it's very common to have Mana. In the present, it depends upon the verb form. Then uh, if you are uh, all are good about that, then we can have the classwork. And after that, I'll solve this classwork for you and also show you Gita examples or maybe I can cover Gita examples now and then we can break for the classwork. So in Gita examples, you see, Yotse manana vekcheham ya etetra samagataha dharta rashtrasya duru buddhe he yudhe priya chikishavaha yotse manan so yotsyate that's the future tense form of the word yud 
so from yotsya te it becomes yotsya mana and yotsya manan that will be the second case plural like raman so yotsya manan so those who would be fighting that's what yots manan would be so avekshyam i want to i shall scan i would see them those who are ready for fight so in english translation if you understand the participle you will translate in english the way it will make sense so here it is translated those who are ready for the fight but literally it say future participle that means those who are about to fight or those who would be fighting then another verse 1829 बुद्धिर्भेदम गुणतस्त्रिविधम श्रुणु प्रोच्यमशेषेण पृथक् धनंजय प्रोच्यू सी दिस वर्ड प्रोच्यम हाउ डज इट कम यू हेव सीन द वर्ड कॉल्ड उच्य i think this word has come in geeta class also uchyate is the passive present tense of vach root vach vach means to speak so vach is vakti is the present tense but in the passive it becomes uchyate now you make it if you have to make a participle you will make it uchyamana if you have to make present passive participle you will make uchyamana and with the pra as upsarga it becomes prochyamana pra plus u prochyamana pra is the upsarga the prefix so prochyamanam that becomes the accusative singular so that means one which is being spoken by one which is being spoken that thing he is referring to so one which is being spoken but you see how the translation has been as i said in english even though it's not a future participle it's a present participle but depending upon the context many a times you can't have the literal translation so geeta press i have taken this translation from geeta press here it's saying i shall explain now if you do not understand the participle and only know the tenses you will wonder where the verb is here where the verb for i shall explain is there is no verb form here actually the whole sentence the verb form is only shrunu listen now here that is the verb form otherwise there is no verb form here so the translation has come as i shall explain but literally it would mean that one which is being spoken you listen to that one which is being spoken literally that's what it would mean so the advantage of studying grammar is that you can see that how the verses can be translated and even if the translation is a little off you can make sense that how the translation has come about and those of you who are attending geeta classes which i am hoping all of you are you kind of would have an idea that how do we translate the verses of geeta then this verse we already have covered in our geeta class verse 220 hanya mane sharire so hanyate that is the again a passive verb passive verb form present passive hanyate like han is the root hanyate so this kind of gives you a clue yate yate in the end it kind of not always but it kind of gives you a clue that it could be a passive verb form 
we have already discussed that in class 11. You can revisit the notes of class 11 to understand a bit more about passive sentences. But hanyate. So hanyate, hanyamana, that would become the participle. And hanyamane is the seventh case singular. Hanyamane. And sharire, that is also seventh case singular. Shariram, sharire, seventh case singular. So this is a special construct which I explained in the verse when I was explaining the verse in Gita class. The two words coming in seventh case singular together or not necessarily singular but seventh case together it creates a special construct in Sanskrit that means that on the body being so on the body Sharira means body Hanyamana means so Han means to kill so Hanyamana means being killed because it's passive. So on the body being killed. So that's the meaning of Hanyamane Sharire. On the, so it's not like locative sense in the sense that in the body or on the body. But when these kind of words come together, it means on in the event of, you can say, in the event of body being killed. So here the translation is even though the body is slain. So let me see if any more questions are there. Otherwise, we'll have our classwork. So this is the classwork. So they are, these are taken from the home exercises, these sentences. So you can try to solve these sentences, study these two page numbers in, in the book and try to solve these sentences. It is 9.55, we'll gather around 10.10. 10. In the, you can always send your questions to through the chat window and we can also discuss it afterwards. So 15 minutes break because it's a six sentences, please try to solve them and we'll gather again about 10.10. 10. Thank you. So there are a couple of questions here. Can you please give an example of passive sentence with dative such as giving the fruit? So if you look at like here we have the example for passive. Rama sees the school gone to by the Shama. So here he is seeing the school but if he is, say, for example, donating for the school, giving the money for the school, then the school would be the fourth case and also the participle. So if you say Rama gives the money for the school gone to by Shama, the school which is gone to by Shama to that school or for that school, Rama makes a donation, Rama gives a donation. So in that case, it will come the fourth case. And you will say, Shamena Gamya Manaya Vidyalaya. Then there is another question. 1A and 1B are karmani sentences using dative form of karta with the verb rochate. Interesting, karta uses dative form and not instrumental. Is that correct? So this is related to these sentences here. The 1A and 1B in the book. So, yo gramaha ramena gamyate same na rochate. The village which is visited or gone to by Rama does not appeal to me. So, here the passive sentence is the ramena. This is the passive sentence. Gramaha ramena gamyate. But same na rochate, that is not the passive sentence. That is, Ruch Dhatu takes the fourth case. That's why it is the fourth case. So, Ramena Gamya Manu Gramo Mena Rochate. So, it's not like Rochate Ruchate. So, that's why it is not the passive. So, this part is the passive, and that's therefore the passive participle have come. Ramena Gamya Mana. But Mena Rochate, 
that is not a passive sentence. It's just that roch dhatu, which means appeal to me or pleases me, it takes the fourth case. So that, that's the reason here. Going to the classwork, let us see if we can solve the classwork here. So, dukham lava manaha janaha isharam nindanti. So, this is, I hope, pretty straightforward. Dukham is sorrow. So, janaha. So, if you look at janaha nindanti, first look at the verb form. Nindanti is the verb form. Nindanti means accuse or criticize. Janaha is the people. That is the plural case. So that makes sense. It's a karta. Plural verb form and plural nominal form. Lavamana is the participle adjective for jana. So that is also plural. Lava mana ha jana. What lava mana? Lava mana means getting or gaining. Dukham lava mana. The one who are gaining, getting the sorrow. Ishwaram nindanti. They criticize God or they blame God. So, people attaining sorrow. Blame God. So, this is the second part of the exercise convert them into Yatat construction. So, if you read the chapter of the book, the way author has tried to explain the concept of participle that he has taken the route Yatat construction first to make a Yatat construction and because Yattat construction has been explained in the previous chapter, relative and correlative clause. So he is basically saying that you understood this structure already. Based upon understanding of this structure, now you can understand the participle. So this is one methodology. Remember, this is not the only way to understand participle. For example, I prefer personally preferred not to take that approach. I took this approach where you create these sentences and slowly, slowly you show that how the participle comes into the play. So different approaches to ultimately the idea is that you should understand how the participles are used. So because author has taken that approach where Yattat construction is being used to explain the concept of participle, his exercises also in the book are of the similar kind. So if you find it too difficult doing the Yattat construction, please you can ignore some of them. The reason is that it's not necessarily had, have any connection. They, they, it is just a methodology to make you understand. It's not that they are necessarily connected, the participle and yattat construction. So if you can understand the participle as such and understand their English translation, you can ignore the yattat. But if you can make it, it would be nice. So in some places, the yattat construction can be very artificial because there are places where it's not equivalent and participle alone makes sense. Similarly, there could be other places where yattad alone makes sense and if you try to put participle, that may seem like a little bit odd. So, even in the previous exercise, some of you who solved the exercise, they raised that concern that what does this yattad mean? How did this come about? And the reason is that yattad construction sometimes can seem very artificial. Uh, it is just a way to make you understand the participle. But if you can understand participle without it, that's fine. So here, if you have to convert this into yattat construction, then the way you will do it, lava manaha. Remember, this will change into the verb form. So participle will change into the verb form. So janaha labhante. So ye janaha dukham labhante. So that the way you will go is ye. Janaha Dukham Labhante Te Ishwaram Nindanti So Te Ishwaram Nindanti 
that's that's what it would mean so it's it's pretty straightforward in most of the cases but in some cases it can be a bit odd ye janaha ishwaram labhante e dukham labhante te ishwaraha ishwaram nindanti now look at the second sentence gajam ikshmanaha shrugalaha tam gajam shamsati so look at the verb here verb is samshati that means praises it's a third person singular so shrugalaha is the singular he is the subject shrugalaha means jackal gaja means elephant so shrugalaha praises the elephant gajam ikshmanaha so remember shrugala and ikshmanaha that is the participial verb for shrugala so ikshate is the gajam ikshmanaha ikshate is the verb form ikshate means sees so gajam ikshate gajam ikshmanaha see seeing the elephant so the jackal who is seeing the elephant he is praising that elephant so seeing so the way you will do it seeing the elephant jackal praises that elephant now if you have to make yatad so remember this ikshmana that is the participle that will convert into the verb form in yat 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 sense yat sense so shrugalaha so the way you will go is shrugalaha yam gajam i think the shrugalaha should be with the yeah so this is a little typo here it should be shruga shrugalaha it's not the shrugala shrugalah yam gajam ikshate saha tam gajam shamshati or tam shamshati yam gajam ikshate tam gajam shamshati we can have like that so either you can again say saha or it is kind of understood shrugalah yam gajam ikshate tam gajam shamshati here if you look at this is the ramena khadyamanam so it is coming ramena that kind of gives you a clue that it's a passive form so khadyate ramena khadyate it is eaten by rama so ramena khadyamanam the fruit being eaten by rama the phalam aham nechami nechami is the na ichami becomes nechami so i do not want so i do not want the fruit eaten by being eaten by rama so i don't want the fruit being eaten by rama and here if you have to convert then khadyamana would become the verb form so ramena khadyate phalam so yam phalam ramena khadyate yah yat yat phalam sorry 
so because it's a neuter so it becomes yat phalam ramena adyate tam aham nechami tat tat aham nechami Okay, any questions so far? So we did the exercise three and uh, why not saha in place of thumb in sentence two? So here, if you want saha, it's okay, but the idea is thumb gajam shamsati. The gajam he is seeing, the elephant he is seeing, he is praising that elephant. So if you want to put additional saha here that refers to shagalaha, that's okay. But otherwise also the meaning is conveyed but it will not come come in the place of saha because the original sentence itself it says tam gajam shamsati so now look at the exercise four which is convert them the sentences into present participle constructions so here it is the opposite like he has given the yattad and has to be converting into the present participle. So, ye janaha nurpena nindyante. So, that is clearly a passive voice. Janaha becomes the object, nupa becomes the subject. So, the people who are blamed or criticized by the king, te sukhamna labante they do not get the happiness. So the people who are blamed by the king do, do not attain happiness. Claro. Okay, so present participle. How are we going to make the present participle out of this? Just like we did the opposite here. Here we will make the this one as the participle. Nindyante. So how will you make participle? First the base. Nindya. Nindya mana. And because it is the plural qualifying janaha. Nindya manaha janaha. So, so you will say here. So Nirpena will come first because Nirpena Nindya mana. So we will say Nindya mana. Nindya manaha janaha. So generally the adjective comes before Nindya manaha janaha. Now in the because it's not a relative clause, we don't need to put ye and te. So it becomes nirpena nindya manaha janaha sukham na labhante. Simple. So, ye murkhaha kavivihi shashyante te kavibhya sampadaha yachanti. This is also shashyante, this is also passive. So, as you can see, this is the third case, kavibhihi. So, kavibhi shashyamanaha murkhaha kavibhya sampadaha yachanti. The fools.
who are praised by the poets give the wealth money or wealth to the poets and here you will make it kavi bhi shashyamanah murghah kavibhya sampada yachanti so so kavi bhi that will come first kavi bhi shashyamana murghah kavibhya sampadah yachanti Similarly, this one, Nadia Tire and Narya Vepante, this is active, 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 Narya Vepante, the women who are trembling on the bank of the river, Tahatom Pashya, you look at them. So, so it can be made, please look at the woman were trembling on the bank of the river and this one will become vepante that will become the participle so how will you say vepate vepamanaha naryaha and taha is the second case accusative, so it will become vepamana. So nadya tire vepamana. So if you look at the, our parts table, nominal declension table. So Gita Gitaha, that is the second case plural. Gitaha similarly Nari Narihi second case plural. Because here is the second case plural, we will use Vepamanaha Narihi. Tom Pashya. So Tom normally comes first. Tom Nadya tire vepamanaha nari pashya. So you see how the participle make the sentence as much compact and more conveying the better sense. Okay, so any question so far then? Okay, so thank you Adriana Ma for your comment and uh, I just wanted to, I just solve the exercise so that you will have an idea that how to do them. The exercise number 238 for lesson number 21 that is already posted into the repository and uh, i have received some comments from the people and this is kind of very good to see that some of you are making very good progress those who are trying to solve the exercises so i'm happy to see that i'm learning i have third exercise almost all correct only few little mistakes and then here attached is the homework from monday's class thank you for posting the solution i do not feel confident without looking at the answers to make sense the exercises are really helping in practicing the content I was pleased to see that I was able to get the majority of them correct. So slowly, slowly, I know it's a lot of work. It's a, it's a good learning. It's a big learning, a very important learning. 
and uh, it does take time and effort quite a significant amount of dedication but the results are also pretty amazing that you start learning a new language the language which is really divine and help you to study the scriptures so as always feel free to send us the email with any questions you have uh, today we covered the class number 15 and three more classes to go till 18 and uh, we we will cover in the book till lesson number 24 that is our objective for this particular course so three more classes to go and three more classes also in bhagavad gita class also so they we would be finishing both the courses about the same time here it will be 26th and the bhagavad gita we will be having the last chapter last class on 23rd So next class, please, uh, any any one of you who is not able to attend regularly because next time we'll, we will be discussing the parts participle. That's a very important concept. Please do try to attend and solve the exercise. Even if you can solve partially, it's okay if you don't have time to solve the whole exercise. But if even if you solve partially, it will give you some clarity about the concepts. With the prayers closing prayers sarve bhavantu sukhinah sarve santu niramaya sarve bhadrani pashyantu ma kashchid dukha bhag bhavet om purnamadaha purnamidam Punat Puna Mudachyate Punasya Puna Madaya Puna Meva Vashishyate Om Shanti 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 Thank you everyone.